So I want to give some advice on avoiding financial abuse with narcissists. When it comes to the whole idealization phase, the love bombing, when you've met this person, when you meet a new romantic prospect, just be aware of you know, someone who is coming across as hyper generous at the beginning of a relationship when they don't even really know you. Ask yourself, what's motivating them? Is it a selfish motivation? Well, what is going on here? What's really going on? And you should probably see are clear of over complimenters, people who are gift givers and flaunters to the extreme, or I should say more so than what is considered normal. I mean, on the surface, you might think, wow, this person is really into me, but, and yeah, maybe they are, but for what reason are they into you? And then they just go a little deeper with that. Be aware of people who are focused on what they have and the appearance of success, looking successful. And the gifts that are being given to you is that what this person can afford. Are they living within their means? Are they being responsible? Are they being realistic? Do they have a grasp on reality? Is it appropriate? Or are they misappropriating? Also beware of people who get into future faking, um, making relationships based on what could be rather than what is. If you were to look at this person and say, you know, well, they're just going through a rough time, but these are problems we can work through. And it's basically a project relationship. Beware of that. If you sit there and ask yourself, if this person never changes and this is who they are and they're always going to be like this, is this something I could live with? And the answer is no, you should probably get away. You should probably move on. Watch out for people who are trying to convince you that they are a good person. Like they've got to prove to you so that like they're selling you on them, especially verbally, okay? Because it's easy for people to say stuff, right? Lip service is cheap, but what are you doing and consistently over the long term? And, and it takes a while to really see that. In my book, I advise at least six months because if they are faking it verbally and in word and in deed, they can't maintain that usually more than six months. The facade will come crashing down. So give it about six months to see how good this person really is consistently. If you're being loved bomb, it may be so that eventually what you have can be used to love bomb someone else. Serious warning, beware of that. When it comes to boundary setting, I heard one attorney say, negotiate like you matter. And I think that's a brilliant saying that empaths, codependents, narc magnets need to really integrate into their philosophy in life. Negotiate like you matter because I think a lot of us uh, were trained not to. We were trained to hyper attune to the needs of others, to the detriment of ourselves. And so what that looks like in reality is that when this person comes in with their sob story of Oh, gee, I lied to you uh, that the lights got cut off because I didn't have the money to pay because I lost my job and I was pretending like I was going to work every day. But, oh, I was out there looking for another job and I just didn't want to upset you. And all of these stories about how they're the victim of their own choices and how they're justified in lying to you and betraying your trust and you should just take them back bail them out you know auto magically fix it with your resources your compassion your whatever you need to ask this person when they're asking you to do it again you need to ask them why would you ask me to do something that puts me at risk what's in it for me advocate for your own interests because that's what they do i mean they're sitting there trying to sell you on giving them more of your money that they keep violating more of your trust that they keep violating. What do you need? You need to be put in a position of power, right? Like if I'm going to loan you this money, what kind of security can you put up against that loan? Because I mean, if you don't pay it and then I can't pay, some just told me, I got to tell somebody out there, do not loan money you can't afford to lose, especially when you're dealing with an ARC. But if you can afford to lose it and you loan it, I say with these people, put up security on it. Like, don't give them something for nothing. 
you have to advocate for your own interests. They do it and they feel no shame. Do not let these people make you feel guilty and, and play upon your conscience knowing damn well they have none. Remember, a healthy relationship is one that will empower you. It will instill security. And the person that you're in this healthy relationship with wants you to win as much as they do. So if you are with somebody who is not concerned about you winning, they're not concerned about how this is empowering or disempowering you. They're not concerned about providing stability and security to you, at least to the point that they're willing to stop destabilizing you, even if it means they have to get out of your life. They have to go straighten themselves out apart from you. This is not a healthy relationship. This is a parasitic relationship, toxic. Another thing you've got to do is remember that love is not what you can give or get in their book. For them, love is what they can get. Love is what they can get. And for you, maybe love is what you can give. This is an unhealthy mentality that narcs and narc magnets have. That's why they attract because they're coming from two polar opposite extremes of toxic thinking about what love is. When in reality, love is not about what you can give or get, it is about what you can share. And the problem is that narcs just don't understand sharing. I think that the narc magnets are giving because they're hoping it's reciprocated and given back to them. They want to share, but unfortunately they give to someone who does not deserve it, does not qualify, is not merited. And unfortunately they do it over and over and over again, repeating, hoping this time it's going to catch. This time this person is going to see how much I really love them, how much I've sacrificed, how much I've given. And they're hoping that eventually this person is going to finally give back to them. That's the fantasy of the codependent. And it never happens because the narc never entered the relationship in the first place for you to win or for anybody but themselves to win. They're not there to empower you. Therefore, they're never going to. Narcs, like I said, do not understand sharing, whether we're talking about emotions, resources, responsibilities. Everything is a contest or a game wherein you're just a mere pawn. And to empower you to become more than that would make them insecure. It would give you the upper hand and that makes them insecure. Once you realize that the relationship with the narc was never intended by them for you to win, to be empowered and to feel secure. Maybe it's easier to understand where you need to start really advocating for yourself and negotiating for yourself and understanding also that, you know, when you do, don't be surprised. Doing so is going to make the narc feel disempowered, insecure, like a loser. It is not easy. There is no magic pill for dealing with these people. My advice also is if you're in a relationship with a narc, Keep your money as far away from them as possible. This is not easy. If you're married, I realize this. My gosh, especially if you have children with them, it is very difficult to extricate yourself from a financial web that you have weaved with them. But you have to understand that as long as you are sharing a house, sharing bank accounts, fill in the blank with them, there is always going to be some kind of crisis affecting your kids forcing your hand because what affects them affects the kids, right? When they don't pay that light bill because they didn't stay on that job and you have to go pay it to keep lights on for your children, well, guess who gets to benefit? They do because they're right there under that roof. My advice is that you get and maintain your own accounts because not to be ugly, but these people are like a parasitic infestation. They're like cockroaches in your kitchen eating up all your food. Just as an example, you know, there are stories of people who have had a cockroach infestation so bad that they've had to evacuate the house. They had to actually move away from the house. It was so bad. The house had to be wrapped and have pest bombs go off in them to kill the infestation. And I don't know how bad the infestation is for you. It will be different for different people. But as much as you can extricate yourself from this person financially, the better. Because the more you're involved with them, the less power you will have. And the more they will exploit and sabotage. When you have the money to leave, leave. If you invest the resources that you get back into the relationship, you're just back to the same cycle. You're feeding the same demon. 
And unfortunately, some of you might have to hit rock bottom, as did I, going to, you know, women's shelters before you can get your power back because maybe you have bad credit or an outdated work history and job skills, etc. Or you just simply cannot get the leverage in your life because you're strapped with three kids that nobody wants to help you pay for. And so you'll have to be resourceful. And in extreme cases, the resourcefulness will be turning to a place like a women's shelter. Some advice on divorcing with children. Specify that they pay the first of every month, not by the last day, because I can promise you that a narc will pay the very last day, if at all, right? And a lot of these legal papers, they'll say that the child support is due on the first day of the month, but they have 30 days to pay it. They have the, till the last day of the month to pay it, basically, before it's counted as late. Specify that they have to pay it in the divorce settlement. Because, right, you have to pay that rent. You have to pay that light bill. Definitely the rent around the first. And landlords don't give you 30 days to pay it. Okay, in the real world, you can get an eviction notice on your door on day three of not having it paid. So do not give the narc a free pass to have 28 plus days of grace to pay a bill that you don't have 28 days of grace to pay for your children. When you go to court, bring up any financial abuse if you can, um, provide documentation. If you have more resources, obviously you're able to do this. You can get forensic accountants to evaluate accounts. You know, you can get private investigators to do financial exploratory and proving things. You can get testimony from others. Obviously, if you're dealing with somebody, right, you're dealing with a narc who hoards as opposed to the waste personality that, I, you know, I mentioned. Somebody who hoards and hides the money. If there are resources there, you can afford to do that. Unfortunately, some of you have an penny to your name to even afford to get an attorney to fight for your best interests and you might have to turn to something like legal aid which a lot of a lot of states have legal aid but gather all the documents and records that you can in court if possible worst case scenario is that you're going to deal with somebody who's going to play dead they're not going to show up to court they're not going to pay the child support they can't be served to appear in court they're going to be mia missing in action and there's nothing that you can do about it but get on welfare and work like a dog to pay their fair share and yours alone and i'm really sorry to say this a lot of you, though, if you're in this situation right now and that's why you're staying with the NARC, you know. You know this and that's why you're staying. Maybe you're waiting for the kids to grow up so that you can just, you only have to look out for yourself. You're biding your time so that the kids are taken care of and then when they're out of the house, you just focus on yourself. But it's not an easy road once you get involved with these people. And so really the best thing to do is don't get involved with them in the first place. And it goes back to that whole idealization love bombing phase because we know how it devolves. If you want to watch the next video in this series, then click here. Or if you want to watch my narcissism playlist, click here. Also, if you're interested in my book on narcissism, check it out at Amazon, Audible, Kindle. Links are down below. Till next time, thanks for watching, commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing.